Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Karina Lopez. I am the clinic director at Lone Star Legal Aid's Low Income Taxpayer Clinic. Today, we're going to talk about tax fraud, how to spot it, and how to avoid being a victim. Before I get started, I need to let you know that this presentation is intended to serve as legal information and does not re replace legal advice. Contact Lone Star Legal Aid at 800-733-733. 8394 or go to www.lonestarlegal.org for more information on legal assistance. Lone Star Legal Aid does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, gender, gender expression, sexual orientation, age, national origin, ancestry, disability, mar marital status, or military status in any of its activities or operations. Next slide, please. So Lone Star Legal Aid provides civil legal services through about a third of Texas. We have 14 offices. We have many units. Um, the ones that I've listed on this slide are just a couple. Um, again, if you'd like to see all of our services, please check out our website. So what I do is that I run our low-income taxpayer clinic. Next slide, please. So what is a low-income taxpayer clinic? We help if you are eligible for Lone Star Services and if you're having a dispute with the IRS. This could be something like receiving a letter that you're being audited or you get a bill and you're not sure why or you don't agree with it, or it could even be uh, representing you in tax court litigation. We educate taxpayers about their rights and responsibilities, and while we do get some funding from the IRS, we are not part of them. We're completely independent. Um, we also cannot help you if you just need a tax return done, but you don't have a legal problem. In that case, you should be going to a volunteer income tax assistance program, and I'm going to discuss that later and show you a couple of options. Next slide. So fraudulent tax preparers are everywhere. Most often you're going to find them, I'm sorry, can you, yeah, there we go. Um, you'll find them in a temporary office during tax time and after tax season, they disappear and whatever that location is turns back into, you know, a barbershop or a nail salon or a taco place, wherever. The number one sign that you should not use a preparer is if they promise that they can get you a bigger refund than anywhere else, because that is impossible. Your refund is your refund, and if it's a higher refund, then it is absolutely fraudulent. A lot of times, these places offer many services. Um, they might also offer things like immigration, credit repair, sometimes legal help, which is illegal because they are not attorneys. However, there's a little bit of a confusion um, in the around the Hispanic population because there is a difference between a notary public and a notario. So literally the words are just translated, but they have a much different meaning. Um, in Texas, nobody is allowed to call themselves a notario because this leads to a lot of confusion. So a notary here, they witness certain legal documents um, like a will or a deed, um, or maybe if you need to do like an affidavit. A notario, on the other hand, is a highly skilled attorney in Latin American countries who's also granted extra rights to draft documents. So it's very important not to confuse the two. Um, unfortunately, I, I see this confusion a lot. Um, but also remember that tax preparers don't need any kind of special education or credentials. Anybody can call themselves a tax preparer. Next slide, please. So I bolded and underlined this because this is very, very important. You are responsible for everything that is on your tax return. It doesn't matter if you went to someone, whenever you sign it, either physically or e-signing, you're swearing that everything is correct. Now, this may not make that much sense to you because obviously if you're seeking out someone to do your taxes for you, you don't know or you don't know or you don't think you know enough to file them on your own. But this is how the IRS sees it. 
Um, before you agree to have a return filed for you, you need to look at these areas and um, make sure that they are correct. These are also things that I look at when I'm looking at a tax return to see whether or not I think that it's fraudulent. Next slide. So your social security number or ITIN. An ITIN is a number for people who cannot get social security numbers. One of the things that I see unfortunately way too often is um, someone letting another person borrow their child's social security number. Do not do this. Um, this is terrible um, because it can actually backfire on you. So I once had a client who had let another person that they know borrow their child's social security number for several years because they weren't going to get any credits from using it themselves. And she would end up getting a cut of this refund. And so eventually it got to the point where she wanted to claim her own child, but the other person said, well, I already have the social security number. I'm gonna keep using it. And they did. And they stopped giving her part of the refund. And the IRS didn't believe her that she was the right person to claim this child because she had been um, committing tax fraud. So you also want to make sure that the numbers are correct. There are some preparers who have extra children's socials lying around, um, whether they have permission, but probably they don't. And so they will add some of these children to your return because they're trying to, act to maximize the child tax credit or um, the earned income credit. If you are an employee somewhere, so that means you're getting paid on the W-2, make sure that there's no self-employment listed. So there is um, a sweet spot for, for credits where if you make too little money, you don't get enough of a credit, but if you make too much, you also get a very tiny credit. So these fraudulent preparers want you to be somewhere in the middle. So they will make up businesses because they know how to get the highest credit. Um, so if it says that you worked as a maid or as a, a babysitter or in a restaurant, these are all real examples, and you didn't, you need to make sure that that is corrected. Finally, the American Opportunity Credit slash Education Credit, these are actually two different credits that you get if you're enrolled in higher education after high school, whether it's college or some kind of a vocational certification. Um, the credit's up to $1,000 refundable. And preparers like to claim this one because sometimes the IRS filters don't catch it and it's not really enough money where it's on the IRS's radar. So um, they try it, oftentimes they divert it to themselves. Next slide, please. A frequent tool that fraudulent tax preparers will use are third-party bank accounts or their own bank accounts. They, they don't want this to be deposited into yours. Most people just use one bank account, but you actually can split it up into three. So if you are paying um, your tax, if you're paying your um, preparation fee with your refund or you're trying to get a loan based upon it, the preparer will most likely have the entire refund deposited into their account or one that they control. And then they will want to cut you a check or issue you a prepaid debit card or perhaps um, put the remainder to your account as, a, as an electronic transfer. So a big problem with this is that you don't have control over that account. So you don't know for sure that what you agreed to pay is actually what's being taken out of your refund. Um, these these preparation fees are ridiculous. I've seen $600, $800, even $1,000 for a very simple return, whereas um, somewhere more reputable might charge you about $80 if you go in person. So when you add up all the fees, all the fees for this, you're paying hundreds of dollars to access your money. So um, you also don't want to go a place that says, they, you will they will prepare your return using your last pay stub. Please don't do this. Every single return that I've ever seen that has done this is wrong. So really you're just kind of delaying things even more. There's no rush to file the exact second that filing season starts. 
And the reason is that the IRS by law cannot process any return that has the child tax credit or the earned income tax credit claimed on it before February 15th. So all that's going to happen if you go on, let's say, January 31st and you get your taxes done by one of these places, it is just going to sit for two weeks because the IRS is not going to accept it. So you shouldn't go to someone um, to do your return incorrectly and cost you way more money when you could get it done correctly and for free. They cannot help you get your refund any faster. The only thing that they will do is that they will give you um, a loan using your own money at extremely high interest. Next slide, please. So when you pay someone to do your taxes, they're called a pay preparer, and they have to include certain identifying numbers from the IRS to identify themselves and also their business. So um, one of these is called a PTIN. That is the one that's used by the person themselves. So let's say I apply uh, to get this number. That number is supposed to belong to me and just me. But what you will see a lot of times um, at fraudulent places is that everybody will share one. So let's say it's, you know, Stacy's tax prep. Stacy is the one who has the preparer identification number, um, but she also lets, let's say, Amber and Joe and Jim use it as well. And so the return actually says that it's prepared by Stacy with her number on it, but maybe it was actually Joe that did your taxes. It's very hard when this happens because it's hard to pinpoint who is responsible for the fraud on that return. Um, another way to commit fraud is to just not put any numbers on there at all, not using a, a, a P10 at all. So what it would look like is that it would look like you prepared the return yourself. It would say self-prepared or it would just have um, a blank signature for you. This is also um, along the same route. You know, this is really hard because if you have something that says self-prepared and this tax preparer commits fraud, you've got to prove to the IRS that there actually was somebody else involved um, in this preparation. So they also are required to fill out a form that says that they have thoroughly reviewed the return for accuracy and they agree. They've checked all the credits. They've done, you know, this, this, and this. It's about two pages long. And you're not supposed to actually file this return. You're supposed to keep it in case the IRS wants it later. Most of the time, this is not done. So nobody's even checking their own work. It could be that there's not fraud at all, but it's just a, a mistake. Um, but they're not even, you know, double checking it. If the preparer has you sign both the tax return and an authorization to e-file your tax return, go somewhere else. This is absolutely suspicious to me. You only need one. You either sign a return and you mail it in by paper or you sign an e-file authorization form where you put in a PIN and that's how you actually file the return. So what I have seen when this happens is that there is a switch between the return that the taxpayer actually signs. So they might sign a return that says that they're going to get $8,000 back, but the one that is actually e-filed says $10,000 back and the preparer is just skimming that $2,000 right off the top. Next slide, please. So how did they get away with this? Um, basically, taxpayers don't know anything about tax. And so they hire someone. And if you see a sign and someone's calling themselves a tax repairer, you tend to think that this is someone who actually knows what they're doing. Because why would they be preparing taxes if they don't know what they're doing? Like, like I said before, you don't need any special credentials. You know, you can just have, you know, your, your mom's sister's hairdresser could decide that they want to be a tax repairer and, and that's it. So um, you need to be very careful about that. Seek out reputable places. A lot of times people are reviewing them, you know, if they're fraudulent. You're, don't go to somewhere that has a one or two star review. Um, you, you should know a little bit better. Um, also, the tax preparer, they, they do a switcheroo, just like I explained on the last, on the last slide. 
they are submitting a completely different tax return. So you may not even know that there's something wrong with that return until it gets to the point where the IRS is sending you letters stating that you need to pay back these credits and you had no idea what they're talking about. Um, at least one of my clients has had this happen. The IRS asked her to pay back an education credit. She was not in school. She did not know the education credit was, was claimed at all. And that's how she figured out that there were actually two returns. Um, the person who's signing a return is responsible. So if you get money that you are not supposed to have, you're going to have to pay it back. Saying that I relied on someone else is not an excuse. Now, if it's at the point where the preparer stole the money and you never actually got it, well, that's a different story. That's something that you want to um, report. And finally, taxpayers don't think they can do anything about being scammed. Like I said before, these people disappear and it's incredibly hard to find them. Next time they might even pop up some at some different location around town. I once traced one preparer to four different locations. And you can't find them later because, later because the IRS letters don't come for a couple of years. And so people give up and they think that there's nothing that they can do about it. However, there is. Um, and I'll mention that a little bit later. Next slide, please. So I am a very big proponent of not paying someone to do your taxes. If you are making under around 60,000 a year, some programs are more, some programs are a little bit less, and you have a very easy return, which to me means that you worked as an employee um, or that you were self-employed, you shouldn't be, be paying anyone to get your taxes done. There are several places that you can go. So there's volunteer income tax assistance, which I mentioned at the beginning. You can search the IRS website by zip code. So there are a lot of locations that are only open for tax season, but there are some that are open until at least October 16th, which is the deadline to file a return with an extension. There are some that are open till November. Um, if you are in the Houston area, Baker Ripley has a year round tax center and there might be one near you as well. If you want virtual tax assistance, there is a really great tool that was developed along with, with the IRS and the Department of Treasury. It's called getyourrefund.org. Make sure it says .org because I'm sure that there is some tax company out there that will charge you and has .com. So what this will do is, yes, you have to do your return online, but they're actually going to pair you with someone from the IRS who, I'm sorry, an IRS trained volunteer, not someone from the IRS, who is going to guide you through this following, um, the filing rather. United Way, they also run VITA sites. You can usually reach them going um, to calling 211 or you can go on their website. There is a program called Miltax. It is through Military One Source, So it is available to, um, to active duty military, National Reserve or National Guard, um, veterans, and it's very similar to getyourrefund.org. They have you do your return online, but again, you're going to have somebody who is available to talk um, through it with you in case you have any issues. Um, finally, if you are a little more tech savvy and you can file your own return, I suggest that you go to IRS Free File Partners. These are approved providers by the IRS who will do your taxes for free. Um, there was a lawsuit a little bit ago about some of these free file um, places actually charging people to do um, certain things. Like for instance, if you were trying to pay, uh, you're trying to get a deduction for your childcare that you paid, they would, they would charge you for the schedule. So those people are no longer on there. These should all be free resources for you. Next slide, please. Okay, and just to, just to kind of, um, Close out today, you always want to get a complete tax return. Um, always, always, always. Do not let the preparer 
finish it later, never sign a blank return, never agree if they say something like, oh, the copier is broken, so I can't give you a return um, right now. Well, you can email me one. The reason that this is very important is, you know, if you end up becoming um, a victim of tax fraud later on and someone needs to unravel this, it's going to be very hard to get this, uh, this return for you and to kind of figure out what went wrong. Always keep your records. The IRS can um, audit you for three years after you file a return. It's even longer if there is some kind of fraud. So never ever give your original documents to your preparer. Either scan them um, or insist that um, you make copies and um, just make sure that you do have those available in case you need it later, report them. Uh, file a police report. This may not uh, resolve in an actual investigation. However, if enough people are being um, reported as fraudulent taxpayers, it is something that the, um, the district attorney can do. They can you know, go after them criminally. Um, it's also really good proof for if you need to file um, something with the IRS. It can be a tax repair complaint. It can be um, an identity theft affidavit, for instance, if they stole your refund or if they filed a tax return and you told them that they did not have permission to do that. That is, um, you know, that's, that's theft and that needs to be reported. The Office of the Attorney General uh, also takes complaints about tax repairs in their Consumer Protection Division. It, um, they actually will um, have that information available. We've, we once mapped it through an entire area and we could see clusters around Houston where the most reports were coming from. Um, again, I'm gonna say it again, if you get a fraudulent tax return, you're gonna have to pay it back. Um, but you know there is help available. There are low-income taxpayer clinics like the one I run. I gave you the information to contact Lone Star at the beginning of the presentation. And if you don't happen to be in our service area, but you are still in Texas, Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid and Legal Aid of Northwest Texas also have LATCs. Really, we just want you to make sure that you're not giving away your money and you're not trusting people that you shouldn't. And that is it for me today. I don't actually see any questions. So I'd like to thank you so much for listening to me. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, and these are things that you can think about later on in case you do need help. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everyone.